Now we're live. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, it's Kurt. It's no fishing and outdoors. Uh, Bobby Whoa. from Hook. What's up? Sorry about that, guys. It seems like every time we start one of these live streams, it just goes to shit on us. But yeah, it, it's it's a quick descent for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey, on on in my defense, I'm I'm trying a whole new way of being able to tag live streaming videos and. Apparently, yeah. so when I was looking this up the other day through StreamYard, it said that as soon as you schedule it and you you check these little notification things inside of YouTube, that it's supposed to automatically start and automatically stop. So don't let me forget at the end of this to actually stop the live stream because if not, <laughs> you're gonna be yeah. going all night. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to be don't want to be talking about nobody at the end. <laughs> no, I'm not even worried about that. I'm worried about what I'm gonna be doing at the end. <laughs> you're gonna see me eating a taco or something that is just totally irrelevant to what's going on <laughs> yeah. right yeah 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 but yeah guys uh what's going on um we're gonna be talking about a few different things today uh so i'm kind of moving into some different things with the channel and i know i talked about it before in some of our other live streams on the fishing and outdoor discoveries page um but since it's literally just me and frodo they do the live streams now uh figured we'd go ahead and split it up that way it's on both of our facebook's and youtube's which i don't think i added your facebook page i don't know i don't know what i did yeah, i don't know i don't know but either. either way i know it's on facebook and it's on youtube guys so we're going to go over some stuff throughout this whole live stream. We might even pull some stuff up on the screen and let you guys look at some stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Let's just get into it then, I guess. Um, <clears throat> feel free to comment anytime you guys want. We should be able to see all of your guys' comments. Live. I'm watching mine. I can also watch yours. If you want. So... I'm pretty sure that all of the comments should show up on StreamYard now. I, I know we had issues with that before, but I, I think I fixed that. So, uh, well, let's find out. Let's find out. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out. So one of you guys just say hello or something in the comments. Uh, and it, it should let us know what platform you guys are watching on too. So, um, but yeah, guys, so we're going to be talking a little bit about um, just fishing in general and uh, some bushcraft stuff see okay so we're getting frodo's comment from i that. i don't see that i i have to see it on <coughs> that apparently okay steven what's going on man okay so i know facebook is working so that that's awesome it's great 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 <coughs> you've got my tackle bag guys so if you guys want to see any of the stuff that that i'm having some luck with this year uh feel i should have brought guys. mine up i didn't even think about it <coughs> so i was just like hey man let's get live and then i was like, you know, I am ill prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go live and not be prepared for anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, typically. That's how our live streams go, though, dude. Like, there's no point in being prepared. Yeah, that's no yeah you know, a typical live for us. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess we'll start off by talking a little bit about how our season's going. I know me and Frodo started off this year super, super slow, and oh, then yeah. it picked up. Kind of slowed down a little bit again for me, but uh, I think it's picked up for Frodo, so I'll let. Frodo can to talk to you guys a little bit about um, yeah, so, his transition. So I, I started off again, you know, trying to do the whole freshwater thing. And it, it just it didn't work for me. I might go back into giving it a try, but dude, I don't know. As soon as I hit saltwater this season and I started landing fish, I was like, this is what I to do. So you know, you know, that's just how it goes. And it, um, dude, that's what baffles me though is like you're a saltwater fisherman which you would think would make freshwater like that much easier for you you know what i mean because it's just i don't know it, it it just would feel like you'd be more universal you know yeah no i dude i completely <laughs> agree but it just doesn't work for me like i've tried spinners i've tried crankbaits i've tried lipless crankbaits i've tried jerk baits i've tried swim baits nothing has caught me anything in fresh water dude oh i've i've literally sat at this like not the same spot but like you know i've walked around this little pond right. for like an hour and a half switching stuff out didn't catch anything 
Like, I didn't even get snagged on the bottom. I didn't even catch the beads, dude. It was bad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just exercise at that point. You know, it's bad when you can't catch a snag, dude. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, man, I was throwing um, that crankbait into a bush, bro, and it came right out. <laughs> right out, great. man. Um, I, I can obviously, you know, catch catfish and brackish water, you know, for fresh saltwater meat. Okay. I'll put it this way: when it splashes back at you, it doesn't taste like salt water. Yeah. But I know it's brackish water because you can also catch like croaker, and they're a saltwater species. Um. But yeah, dude, I, I can catch catfish all day long. That's not a problem. It's all the fun species to try and catch that are. A problem for me. I'm just, I, don't I don't know. So this is how my season started out. Right? <laughs> it was terrible. So it was it was still pretty cold because like we had we had that super cold, just that cold air constantly for like the first week and a half, two weeks of spring, you know. And I'm sitting there freaking out, thinking that, that it's gonna totally destroy spawn. I'm like, man, this is gonna be terrible. Well, it started picking up a little bit, you know, we started getting on some fish, you know, and uh, I got on a couple of, couple of bass at Valco and stuff and a couple at the Reservoir, which I have some content on my YouTube uh, now for that. But out of nowhere, and for those of you guys that are in Pueblo or that are in Colorado in general, we're probably, probably around for the most recent snowstorm that happened after like a 70 degree day, which was, which was really weird. Um, but it kind of slowed down after that for me. I was able to get on get on a few trout and stuff like that. And like I said before, I'm really pushing for the catfish and the carp this year. I want to get on some some bigger fish this year. Right. Uh, but I, I I think where the struggle has been the most is with the weather changes for us. So what I think I'm going to try to do um, is focus a little bit more on the bass for the next few weeks, and then probably taper off. Still still maybe fish night for the cats, but. I don't know. It's it's really hard to tell because after that that last snowstorm we got, it kind of messed everything up again, and then it kind of started leveling back out. Which the last week I haven't been fishing or doing anything, so um, I don't know what the last week has actually been producing. But I've been seeing great results on Fish Brain and uh, on some of the the YouTube and Facebook pages that are for fishermen. So, but yeah. Um, as far as that goes, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about bushcraft, too. Um, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I got recently and what I plan on using and where I plan on going uh, here in the next month or two. And hopefully, me and Frodo have been talking about doing a, like a, a survival challenge, a co-survival challenge between both channels, um, almost like a collaboration. But we're going to try to compile all the footage to make one video, but two separate videos for each channel. So that should be pretty interesting. Uh, Frodo's lucky. He can walk like right outside of his door and he's in the woods, it seems like. So, me on the other it, hand, it, it's a little further than that. It's across the street, but yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what if Frodo crossed the street to not get hit by cars? Hopefully, that's that's, <laughs> cool. <laughs> he hasn't that, that's gonna be luck. the challenge. That's yeah, he hasn't challenge. had the best luck crossing the street lately. So, <laughs> it is what it is. Oh man, Steven, what's going on, man? Now, all you guys that are in here watching, I appreciate you guys coming in. Um, yeah, the challenge is getting to the woods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Surviving the trip there, not the yeah, woods. exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, um, survival when you get there is easy. It's it's, it's crossing the street. That's a problem. Yep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did pick up some did pick up some some pretty cool stuff, and I'll break it out here in just a minute. Show you guys how it sets up and stuff. It's pretty cool. It's a little wood stove. Uh, they call it a pocket stove. It's right in the side of my tackle bag or my backpack, you know, whatever I'm carrying that day. Then we're going to go over some different types of knives. Uh, Frodo, I think, has the same sets that I do for the mossy oaks. And I, then, uh, I don't know where mine is, but I, I do have them, yeah. The only one I'm missing is the... Ivory. Wait, no. No, I got all four of them. Did one of them come in a plastic case? It did. No. Yeah, it came in a plastic holster. One of them did. Mine didn't. Wait, which one is that? 
This is I assume just just a regular craft knife. Oh yeah, that didn't come in the same kit. Uh, it may not have came in that kit actually, because I know I bought a few Mossy Oak stuff. But yeah, guys, so they sell this kit at Walmart. It's a great kit. Comes with four different types of knives. Um, it has this knife here, <coughs> which is what you would use for, you know, cutting, cleaning your fish, or uh, you know, harvesting. Just harvesting in general, actually. You know, it'd be great for harvesting rabbit or something like that too. Um, it'd probably be pretty good if you're on the coast, like. Uh, shoreline anywhere for trucking clams as well. Yeah, see, I, I we don't do that here, so I mean, that's <laughs> y'all got, got mussels. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's some stuff we can do. Same concept. <laughs> then we have this one here, it's just a snub nose. So, this one here could be used universally. Um, I'm sure most people would probably use this mainly more for. I don't know. Like this is more of just one of those utility type of knives, something you keep on you for easy cuts. I would, I would think. Yeah, you know, digging something out of like. I don't this know. one here still baffles me. Maybe Frodo can tell me what this one's supposed to be because this one here, to me, I would, I, I would almost think that it's it's more of just a of like a hunting type of knife. And no, it could be used I, for I think throwing, it's just right? a typical I think it's just like a typical carry knife. Like something you carry with you that you can use for pretty much anything. Um <clears throat> but like for instance, say you're out in the woods or whatever and you fall and you need to cut something to make a brace or whatever, it, it would come Maybe. in. Maybe. This one here, I would not recommend using for any kind of bushcraft stuff where you're going to be tapping logs or anything. Cause this, I mean, it's rough. It's as rough as it looks. It's got yeah. sharp edges. It's not a comfortable knife, but first, you know, just to have something in your bag. If it's, you know, handy, it'll definitely help you in the situation. This one here is one that I bought uh, just recently on Amazon. It's a Perkin and this is actually a bushcraft knife. So I absolutely love that they're knives. Yeah, they, it's pretty. It's pretty nice knife. It didn't come as sharp as I wanted it to, but I, I mean, I sharpened it. It's got that full spine, so it's really great to use. You know, to tap on to split logs. Um, it did do very well uh, with tinder on some sticks. You know, I'm sitting there scraping tinders off, and it did really well for that. Uh, I don't know if I would really use it for anything big. I think I'd probably use one of my bigger knives for that which i don't have pulled out or i grab them but i don't know it's kind of pointless but yeah. uh, one thing that a couple of other things that you guys should always carry in your bag i mean these you can pick up at harbor freight i like keeping them in my bag just because if i'm shaping something out of wood it's nice to have it's just a simple file oh, okay so i always keep that with my knives and it also doubles for scaling too, so you can use this to scale a fish pretty, pretty quick actually. Um, <laughs> I need I need to try that now. I need to try scaling a fish. <laughs> it sounds dude, like dude, it's it sounds like so a blast. much easier. It's so <laughs> much easier. VA Outdoors, howdy, how's it going, man? Stephen Dumpy said, waiting to see when we were gonna get on the cats. So me and Nico are going out tomorrow night. Uh, you're more than welcome to join us. I'm not sure where we're going yet. We're probably going to hit somewhere in the Arkansas, but uh, I'm not 100. You, you need you need to use that setup I sent you. I think <clears throat> I think just starting out with catfishing, like getting serious with it. I think you should try that out. And I think you know, I have that too somewhere, like close to me. I just don't remember where I put it. What's I'll have going to look on for that here in a second. Um, this is another. Uh, it's another nice little knife to have. Um, I got one that's similar to this for Nico last year, except his came in a case. And I kind of wish I would have bought the one that I bought for him because that knife kicks ass, dude. But yeah, it's just a nice little fishing knife. Not yeah. the safest thing to use, but it was cheap and it's extremely sharp. Like it stayed sharp. So oh, that's I, like my new knife. I think it's, yeah, it's right here. Hang on. I got to be taller, guys. <laughs> Don't judge me. Nico says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Nico, teach Chris how to catch catfish. <laughs> Bro, you know what pisses me off the worst about that? So that night that me and Nico went out to run in and uh, we fished the inlet, we got hit by something so big that it tipped a bucket over that had rod holder PVCs coming out of it. And we had a fair amount of weight in there, like enough that it wasn't a trout. Like it had to have been a carp or a catfish. Right. And this happened two or three times, dude, where I mean, these hits were so hard and I mean, they were gone. They were gone quicker than you could even get to the pole. I mean, just one nice smack and that was it. So I think those might have been carps, you know, just because of I how say, that, that it sounds was. like That sounds like carp because what catfish will do, they'll hit it and then they'll sit there and then they'll bump it again and then they'll sit there and then they'll hit it really hard and take off. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't happen. I mean, it, it hit hard, but it didn't. And there, there was a few smaller hits that were that were pretty decent hits, but there it wasn't. It no might have been catfish. That, it it might have been catfish. Um, they were loving the chicken livers. That's what makes me think it was catfish because we weren't fishing yeah. corn that day. So that yeah. that's the only thing that steers me away from the carp. But I know carp they'll they'll try to eat anything. So you know, just just like catfish. Uh, VA outdoors. What's going on tonight? Hope all is well. Everything is great, man. We're, we're yeah. having a good night just sitting here talking about fishing and some outdoors type of stuff. I'm actually going to show you guys this stove while we got you guys in here. And guys, if y'all are stuff. in here, pick up uh, your outdoors and more. That's one of my buddies, and he's just now starting a YouTube channel. So. I would help out a lot if y'all uh, grab him up. And that goes for all you guys. I mean, if you guys want, if you guys want us to subscribe to your guys' channel, you know, all you gotta do is, you know, start talking in the chat. Um, this did come with some other stuff, and we'll go over that here in a minute. But I'm actually gonna set up this stove, and I'm gonna show you guys how it works. And I'm actually gonna pull out this. Uh, what the hell was that? Something fell. I don't know what it was, but it sounded bad. Um, so I'm gonna pull up. <laughs> it sounded bad. I'm gonna pull up this kettle. So my parents got this for me last year for my birthday, I think. Look like my camera is gonna start having problems focusing. I don't know why they had to put it in this bag that you can't get it out of. But you know, we'll we'll get it out of here eventually. So it's a pretty nice little kettle, guys. It comes with with the cup and the spoon and all that stuff in it too. And, uh, I think I did a review on this. Did I? Did I think you? I did. I know you did a review on the survival kit. I don't know if you did a review on that. I don't know if I did a review on this, but if I didn't, we will do a review on it. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice little kettle, good for cooking, you know, cups of soup or coffee, tea, whatever, you know. Um, but yeah. this, uh, this little stove, it comes in this, this little pouch, so it'll fit in a cargo pocket, honestly. And this is your stove, all your stove parts. Go ahead and we'll throw it together. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you reviewed that. You just did the survival kit unboxing review. I know I didn't do the stove for sure because this was something I was actually gonna wait to do until a live stream because I wanted to actually put it together live. Right. <clears throat> and my plan was to actually put it together live blind, but I wanted to make sure that I had actually got to use it once and it was actually a good product before I recommended it, which right. is it's an awesome product, guys. Um I think I paid 30 bucks for it. Well, I think it was like 25 bucks or something on Amazon. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah, that's not bad at all. No, no, I mean, this thing, this thing here can help you out a lot, especially if you're in an area that, uh, like here in Colorado, where fire danger is, you know, fire can spread super easily up in the mountains or something this is something that's nice to have because it's easy to contain and that's how fast it went together i probably could put it together faster if i wanted to but i mean it took me less than a minute to put this thing together yeah and set it down where you guys can see it here um but yeah you'd put your your sticks your twigs you know whatever you want in here it doesn't not a whole lot of room but it actually does hold a lot of wood um just smaller pieces of wood but yeah you can get your kettle and you set it on top and you got yourself a little wood stove, a way to warm water, you know, purify water, whatever. So this is something I like. That's, that's my favorite feature is yeah. that, you know, it, it it has that specifically set up for you to put like a kettle or a pot or whatever on so you can 
boil water or cook something small, you know? Yeah, and I mean, it's a really important thing to have because, I mean, in most situations, especially survival situations, not so much bushcraft, you know, bushcraft are, are planned trips usually, whereas, you know, a survival situation, you don't know where it's going to happen. So if you have this with you, you have a way to purify water. It's dirty water. You know, if there's a mud pile, it doesn't matter. You have a way to purify water. It might not taste the best, but um, it did come with a few other things too. Well, so little wire saw, and it honestly, also came. Honestly, I, I would cheat. I would cheat. What I would do is I would get an actual kettle with like the steam spout, and I'd get you know some type of thick rubber hose, hose, rubber hosing. I guess that's the right word. Anyways, something like a radiator line or fuel line, and you can attach that to the spout run it up and then have it drip down and oh, yeah. essentially distill water right there <laughs> yep and i mean there's tons of different ways where you can actually purify water even without fire um a lot of them to me aren't really recommended um but i think the closest one the one that i would use is the charcoal trick where they actually use charcoal to purify the water and I even that, I, I still think, think the best yet. one, in my personal opinion, especially again living on the coast, a lot of stuff washes up on shore from like you know <laughs> fans throwing up boats or whatever. But a oh, fuller still, you get a piece of plastic, you dig a hole, put your plastic, put a rock in the center of it, put you know a cut bottle or whatever you got in the middle, and then put some type of greenery down there. Yeah. And, you know, the greenery will get baked in the sun, cause steam, and make water. Um, just don't use, like, poison ivy or you know, <laughs> some type of poisonous plant. Make sure you know, you know your plants yeah. before you do that. And yeah, a great <laughs> thing to have, too, each state has them, and they're, they're at Bones, Barnes, Bones, Barnes and Noble. Um. <laughs> <laughs> in each state. Anyway, uh they're, they're books that have uh, a bunch of stuff on plants, and it's basically survival. So you can get an actual Colorado survival book or Virginia survival book or Texas. Um, but a native plant book to that state can help you because it tells you what plants are edible. And somewhere around 60 to like 75% of plants usually are not something that, that you should be eating, but it's not something that will harm you so just yeah. knowing knowing what those plants are and even root shapes like uh I bought a military survival book a while back and they told you how to spot any plant anywhere in the world just by its root and you could tell if the root is something that's edible so um but yeah guys we're gonna I, go ahead i don't know i don't know about colorado but how long well i don't know about most states outside of the eastern seaboard but along the south side of the eastern seaboard, aloe vera pretty much grows wild. If oh, you yeah. find aloe vera, you can use that in a solar still. Actually, you could probably just eat aloe vera and just cut the spines off of it and take a bite. I don't think it'll hurt you. No, I do think that it would probably be a pretty efficient laxative, though, because it is a very oily based plant, which could be seriously dangerous in a survival situation to have diarrhea. Like, that, that could be bad. And I don't, it's it's got a lot of water in it too though like yeah. i don't know i don't know that's one of those things maybe i'll try it maybe i'll try it out of airplane and do a 24 hour live where i <laughs> eat it at the beginning and see what happens yeah yeah it just sounds <laughs> like that sounds like a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a horrible idea but yeah guys um, i'm gonna google it <laughs> if, if you guys if you guys aren't subscribed to co-fishing or to hooked fishing please go subscribe guys we have some great content it's going to be coming out here this summer uh, a lot of planning to do i got to try to figure out a way to prioritize my my content a little bit and figure out where i want to go um i decided i don't think i'm going to push too hard on the rock counting stuff it's uh it's extremely time consuming and it's it's gonna 
put me in areas of Colorado that, that take a long time to get to. So that might be something that I just do a video on, you know, maybe once every couple of months. I don't think I'm really going to focus on that too much. Um, well, yeah, I guess we could start talking a little bit about uh, fishing. I think that's what everybody is kind of here for, probably. Um, you know, we can talk a little bit about what gear we're using or what gear we want to be using. I don't know. I, I think I'd rather talk about what gear I am using right now because it's going to be more beneficial for those people that are here to see what I'm yeah. using. Um, so just real quick back to the aloe. It says, <laughs> <laughs> while most people apply the gel to the skin, it is also safe to eat when prepared right. There's apparently a laxative layer that if you can distinguish it, you can remove that layer and the gel and the skin are safe to eat as long as you remove that layer. Huh. Okay. So I was kind of right there. It was a laxative yeah. point. Yeah. But even even most cacti are, are laxative too. Like you got to be real careful what what cactus you eat. Um, which I me know, personally, uh, I've I've actually tried chewing a few different species of cactus, and of course you have. <laughs> there's no water in those, so that was a fucking lie, man. Um, uh, prickly pear. I know prickly pear cacti. Yeah. If you uh, roast them, they're actually really good. Yeah, they actually sell my grocery stores like different types of cactus too. Which I don't, I don't really know what what kind of meals you'd want to prepare, you know, with with cactus. But you know, it, uh, some people, I guess, uh, it's not my thing. I actually, uh, I actually have a hard time eating salad when I have. So, um, but yeah, so this was in a few of my my last videos. This is my spin rod. It's the Revo X combo. So far, it's it's been one of the best combos I've ever had. Uh, when my wife first got it, it took me a while to get used to it. it it's a heavier rod, so you know I'm used to using uh, lights. And this one is like a, how would you say a straight medium? I wouldn't even say medium light, but uh, it does have great action on the tip. And so far, it's held up to every fish that I've been able to get hooked up on. So. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, I um unfortunately don't have any of my gear in my room with me. Uh, I went fishing last weekend, and it's all still down in the basement. But um, <coughs> I typically do bottom fishing when I go out to the pier. But I decided to dig last weekend, and I went to Walmart and got one of those one and a quarter lead uh, jig lures. It's about yay long. It's got a single treble hook on the back, and I was destroying uh, spotted trout. Destroying them. They could not get enough of it. And I couldn't stop myself from getting hooked up. It was, it was fun. Uh, I can tell you the exact brand here in a second. I just got to go to Walmart. Go to Google, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff that uh, people are people are saying that they're having good luck with. I, I I don't know how how true some of this stuff is, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna um, uh, let's see. Shed by oh god, what was it? Let's just look up sexy shad cranks I'm sure I can find it. So, uh, you know, we had talked about sexy shad previously in a lot of our videos, it being a very, very common color scheme for a lot of anglers to want to use. Um, and I think this was, was it Zuri? No, it wasn't Zuri. Where, where, where is it? Hold on, guys. Let me find this. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised that this was working and I'm pretty sure it was a strike king. Yep. Here it is right here. So this is the summer sexy shed. So this is one thing that I seen come up on uh, fish brain several times over the last, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks, something like that. Um, and it, it, it does look good. 
to me, I, I, I think the, the reason why it's working so well right now is because of the darker colors. Uh, I actually managed to lose my brighter colored Sexy Shen uh, small, it was, it was a quarter ounce crankbait um, when me and my brother went out to Turkey Creek one day. And luckily I lost it on a fish, so I'm not that super disappointing. It's not like I'm right. lost it or something. But yeah, it still sucks to lose stuff like that. Um, but other than that, like that, that's the one product I wanted to cover tonight because it's one that I haven't thrown. So if any of you guys have thrown this summer sexy shad, sexy summer shad, I don't know what the hell it was called. But anyway, let's see. Let's see if I can. <laughs> there you go. If you guys have thrown this lure over here, let me know. Let me know if you guys think it's it's worth the investment because um, I, I like I like my jerk baits. I, I just I, I like when it comes to crankbaits. Unless I'm on my boat, I try to stay clear of crankbaits in general because there's so much vegetation right now, especially like this year for some reason that it's it's super hard for for me to get on anything. So uh, besides plants, obviously. And so I just sent you a link to the Walmart website, uh, and it's the exact one that I was using. I'm going to be doing a review video on it here shortly. I just don't know when. Oh, yeah. These start. are like the striker minnows. So these are kind of interesting, guys, because I've used these before, too, as well. The colors are a little different. But the only problem that I've had with these is I can't throw them out further than, like, 10 or 15 feet without them. Really? Yeah, Ooh, like they, they don't have one, no weight to them, dude. Well, this one specifically is like straight lead, dude. It's it's solid metal. Oh, this ain't like a plastic hollow no, body. It's metal. It oh, is okay. Metal. Well, yeah. I like this one. I really like this one. So, and it, I mean, obviously, it's got those Colorado trout colors for me, but. That, so is this is this technically classified as a spoon then? No, it's a jig. It's spoon. You're right. to, it sinks to the bottom and you jig it off and let it go back down, jig it off. See what gets me is that treble hook, man. Like that is that's just a killer for for the bottom, dude. Like, but it's in theory, it's the same thing I do with with my castmasters. It's a narrow spoon. It's heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I and I bounce it off the bottom all the time, so I guess it's kind of the same thing. So, not really much different there. Uh, you know, I think I think with all the weight being up front, the treble hook's not going to give you an issue. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. because I, I do know it's wider in the front. Like you can clearly see it's wider in the front, so there's more weight there than there is at the back end of it. Um, but then, man, it works great for trap here. Yeah. Trout. I don't know if it's great for freshwater, but you know, trout. Trout is a species. I I think that they're just kind of universal. Like yeah. I bet you, if you were to send me that, or if I was to go buy, because I don't think they sell that specific one here. They might. I don't know. Dude, I'm next time I go to Walmart, I'm getting like six oh, yeah. more in all different colors, and I'll grab an extra one for you. Yep, it, they do not sell it here. So yeah, if you want to ship me one of those, I'll throw it. I guarantee you. Freshwater trout will will bite it. Like I I can almost promise. I kind I kind of want to see either just because like I said it's it's an ounce ounce and a quarter or an ounce and a half. You can probably cast it a good you know fifty yards. Well, dude, like <laughs> what's funny is like I don't know, what do I have over here? It's just kind of random. Oh, like like a cat like a tab on a can. I could literally try to weigh that down a little bit throw it out there throw a, the treble hook on there and i could probably catch a trout with it that's yeah. just how it is here i mean they anything shiny especially like when you get into that early evening when it's the sun's you know just hitting that water just right like they'll they'll bite anything shiny um and the yeah, same kind of goes for for wiper too you know striped yeah. bass whatever you want to call them i know it's I, um, I still want to try and make a spoon out of an actual spoon and see what happens. Do you remember those spoons that we, I think we tried to shape some spoons a few years ago. I was in the garage and then you tried one, I think too. Yeah. 
I remember going to the Dollar any Tree heat when we did that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, and it was it, like it was all jaggedy. I remember my fingers were getting all cut up, and yeah, yeah, it was yeah. all bad. Yeah, so this time I say we get like a spoon and a torch, heat it up, you know, hammer it out, <laughs> and then get like a grinder or something, smooth it out. Yeah. So I I think. You know, it'd be awesome if you could get some heat on it and actually shape it. But you would yeah. have to find an old school spoon. Like it couldn't be nothing that's newer because it's all that uh, that plated stuff. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Rough. So I don't know on that one, but yeah, I, I don't really know. Go to the thrift store and pick up one random spoon and see what happens. <laughs> oh yeah, some old like Victorian styled spoon. The ones that weighed. <laughs> Remember those little grandma had that weighed like 40 pounds when you'd go to the, yeah. It was like your hand would be tired. I was by just the time about to say, you're just going to your grandma's house and still a spoon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's funny too, because my grandma actually gave us some of those heavy spoons a while back, or like the whole Civil War set. And I'm like, I, I can't eat with them, dude. Like, the kids use them all the time. I can't do it. They feel too heavy to me. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, I don't, dude, I don't I'm, like it. I'm super weird. Like, I can't even use a fork if it's too long. I don't know. It's just weird to me. Steven says, let me know how you want it. I can make it. Bro, doesn't matter. You make me a spoon, I'll even review it on YouTube for you. Send me one, too. I'll even shout you out on it. Yeah. Make us a couple of spoons, we'll throw them in. I, I, you know, I honestly, dude, I would say if it wasn't 1030 already, I would, I'd be more than willing to go out and get on some kitties tonight, but. I think I'm going to wait till tomorrow night. Give me a little bit more time to prepare to. I got livers, got everything ready to go. I just, just got to get everything together. So. Hell you, man. you need to find somewhere where you can buy like squid. I So I think I found a place where I can actually buy it. And it's it's uh, King Super's Kroger. They will carry it. But sometimes you have to actually order it. So. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Like, it just, it works here. Um, again, we're connected to the Tuscan Bay though, so that might yeah. be why. But catfish eat pretty much anything, and I think if you throw something different, they're gonna try it. You know what I mean? You know, I I've always kind of wondered what would happen if you were to make a pack bait with with like the three main things that people use for catfish. Like you know, they love hot dogs, they love liver. And, you know, a lot of times people will throw like other types of processed meats in. So if you were to like blend all three of those meats together and get a nice pack bait with like some, uh, some garlic flavored crackers or something and just leave it real simple, you know, just, to, just enough to bind it. And then I, I don't know. Oh, did I tell you that I actually made that, uh, uh, that method feeder with the PVC well started it anyway. No, no, yes. I'm actually really interested in that. Because like I said, I'd, I'd love to catch carp, and I know we have them here. I just don't know how to target them. Um, um, like I said, I catch catfish all the time, but I literally just use a three-out hook or a treble hook and um, let it sit on the bottom. You know? I think that's, that's mainly how, that's an old school way of doing it too, you know, like most people just but, stuck with corn. You know, corn is being the biggest thing for carp here. Like in Colorado, like that's I've what everybody that. says to use corn, corn, corn. And I've never had luck with it either, but apparently I've everyone tried, else does. I've tried corn and I've tried bread. I've tried a mixture of the two. Actually, I made a bait. It's probably still sitting in my grandma's freezer. I made like this big, like two pound Ziploc bag full of it. And it's bread, sweet corn, uh, it's either cherry or strawberry Kool-Aid and a bunch of garlic powder yeah well i think one thing that you might even be able to you know what i just thought about though you might want to tell your grandma that's in there so she don't cook it thinking it's something else because that would be really nasty <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that one out there but uh I, I so i decided to use green food coloring one time just recently in my corn which was kind of weird but it was kind of cool so it turned the corn this like fluorescent green yeah, almost like chartreuse. Yeah, yeah, it had a really nice color to it. And it, unfortunately, we didn't get on nothing on when I used it that night. But I, that was like 
that was right around the time where I was really struggling at the beginning of spring. Actually, it was probably towards end of winter, actually, when I did that. I remember it was one of the warmer days. Me and Nico had went out. And uh, if I remember right, I think we may have been cooking hot dogs that day. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know why that's relevant, but you know, <laughs> it's just something I thought I'd throw in there. I just got to add that spin to it. You know? We ate hot dogs that day. Yeah. Um, but I'm actually going to see if I can find that method feeder. I don't remember where I put it. Just to give you a general idea how the design is. So I'm going to pass this over to Frodo for a minute. And while I'm up, I'm going to use the restroom. So give me a minute, guys, and I'll be back. In the meantime, here's Frodo. All right. What's up, everyone? Um, I'm trying to see if I can get to the comments. There we go. I can see the comments. Uh, Steven, I'm assuming you're in Colorado, right? And Nico, Nico don't talk to me no more. <clears throat> All right, guys. Uh, yeah, so every time I've gone fishing in freshwater, I've caught nothing but catfish. So I kind of stuck to it. And then, like I said, I jumped back in saltwater and I'd, I've caught weak fish, actual sea trout, stingrays i caught a blue fish and a couple little spots and then a croaker so i don't know i just i like saltwater better there's more species all around it's just nicer yes yeah, sir all right cool 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 <laughs> yeah i um me and Chris were going through on Google Earth or Google Maps or whatever you want to call it the other day and we were looking at like different sections of the Arkansas and I was like, hey, you should check this spot out for catfish, this spot. So I gave him a few spots to, you know, try out. So if he remembers where they are, maybe you could, you know, corroborate some of them or, you know, explain why they're good. Because Honestly, I don't, I don't even know why they're good, other than catfish like deep pockets where fast moving water starts to slow down because that's where all the food comes in. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's different over there. I, like I said, to the bass and red snapper. Yeah, I, I, I want to go back to Florida. I miss Florida so much. Um, actually, I didn't mind freshwater fishing in Florida, but I never caught any native species. It was all the, you know, um, invasive species, like, caught a couple snakeheads. I want to go snakehead fishing here. I just don't know where to go because everyone likes to be so secretive. Um, I caught a couple cichlids. I don't remember what type they were, but I caught a couple cichlids down in Florida. And, uh, a lot of bass that aren't supposed to be there. I don't remember exactly what species it was. Might have been Alabama bass, but they're they're all over Florida. Huh. Well, I think this is bad. I could not find it, so I'm gonna have to ask my wife where it could have possibly gotten put. But anyway, guys, just to <laughs> give you guys an idea, so I had a piece of half-inch PVC. Um, I cut about a three inch piece off of it and drilled holes through it this way. Uh, so three holes, six in total this way, six in total that way. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wire, the inline, cause it's gonna be an inline method feeder. I'm gonna run it through the, uh, the actual PVC itself, tie off for the, the weight treble or however you wanna rig it. I can set it up different ways. I and, usually so with method feeders, what I normally see is people use like a one out or a two out hook and they flip it back over, which with something like that, I guess you would just put a piece of corn on it and let it sit to the side or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you use corn or you could actually use whatever bait type you're using. I think corn is usually what people use on it because it actually stays on the hook. Yeah. And you know the other the other stuff kind of floats floats around. So that's the whole purpose of a method feeder. And I really wish I knew where I put that thing because 
I kind of planned on making a video on it, but I wasn't finished with it yet anyway, so. Oh, wow, you caught a four foot gar. That's awesome. Um, so actually, I think I'm gonna try and go gar fishing nope. tomorrow. Uh, no, crazy. Apparently they're all over the Chickahominy. I just gotta get in deeper waters to find them. Yeah, I thought gar like during certain times of the day actually were like kind of like catfish. They come closer to the shoreline in shallower waters. Because all the gar videos I watch, these guys only throw their lines out like 15 feet. They're not they're not out yeah, so 40, 50 feet. You know? A lot of people that fish for gar fish for middle ones. <laughs> and what they do is they'll put like, you know, a six to eight inch leader just below their bobber and let it hang out with like a little number one or number two hook. I want to catch big gar. I'm going to use like a one hot hook and maybe like a 12 inch leader that fish like you know 60 feet of water yeah let's, see, let's turn this music down a little bit i feel like it's really loud i'm sorry guys if that was loud like this entire time um you know i god i don't know if we can get demonetized for playing an actual gar clip I guess if I don't play the whole clip and no audio, <laughs> I don't know. Let's, I guess we could try it. You know what? Screw it. Worst case scenario, it's just, this is not going to be able to get monetized, which I'm not that sad about because it's a live stream anyway. So yeah, I was going to say, this is stuff that we could just privatize afterwards anyways. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's see. Uh, Virginia guy. Should I... Yeah, I mean, we got long nose gar here. West. Yeah, gar dude plays like Neck crazy. Creek. Let's see. Oh, wait. Summer. Okay, I don't really want a tips video. Like, I just want to see somebody catching one. Um, alligator gar in Texas. So. Gar fight like crazy. The craziest fight I've ever had aside from sharks, was a red drum. If you've never caught red drum, I suggest getting to some salt water and doing it. They fight like a runaway dump truck. Really? Yeah. And it's amazing. See, I'm hoping I can... Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to find something here. And this, yeah. So this, this isn't a very big gar, but yeah. Hold on. Hey, Florida gar, Florida gar, or long nose gar too, right? I think it's the same species as long nose gar. Well, I think Florida has alligator gar too, though. Tuna is a good fight too. I've only done that once, and it wasn't a big tuna. So I'm actually gonna let I'm gonna let Frodo find a video for us and send it to me, and I'll play it. Just yeah. because I, I don't have experience with gar, we don't have them here, so I don't know what would be considered a good gar catch. And I'll I'll play it for you guys, so you guys can actually see it. But um, you know, one thing I'd kind of like to, you know, maybe try for this year if if I can get to an area that's it's not super super far but that's why i was thinking texas because you know it's the gulf is the closest i really want to try maybe getting on some of the smaller sharks there just because yeah. frodo's been basically talking about it constantly and at first it's funny because i was like you know what no i no sharks no it ain't gonna happen i'm not gonna you know it's he's leaving with whatever's on the end of that line because i'm not getting it off but dude you know it, it no, yeah. you got you got to come to the coast you got to come to the east coast if you go down to texas i'm gonna be very upset <laughs> your first saltwater fishing is by yourself <laughs> I'll, I'll drag you down to texas that's basically sea level getting there's not but you know you'll be all right i mean from here it is from here we go down 95 through like georgia and, oh yeah if you go through like alabama and all that yeah i guess 
Which, yeah, that would be the fastest way for you guys anyway. But yeah, so kind of fill in the blanks here while Frodo's looking for that. Um, what we're gonna try to try to focus on this next week is uh, is just bass, strictly bass. I'm gonna be fishing Valco a lot, um, and hopefully try to get on some catfish too. Me and Nico are gonna kind of make some of those plans for the evening though, and uh, it's it's harder to get footage in the evening because I don't have the lights for my GoPro yet. And just thinking about that, I should have gotten one today while I had the chance, but I did not think about it. Uh, we do carry lanterns and stuff, but, you know. Is Steven still here? I think that that's his name, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, Steven. All right. <clears throat> Actually, I have a question for him. Because here, during the day, the best time to catch bluefish is like during the day, like the middle of the day. Blue catfish, anyways. Um, channel catfish and flatheads come out more at night i don't know if it's the same there but I, I think it's because blue catfish can live with x amount of salinity so they actually move into the chesapeake bay at night and then they move up into the rivers during the day that so kind of makes know. sense though i i think that'd be the same pretty much anywhere right well, y'all don't y'all don't have like a big body of salt water for them to go to at night. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if you know it changes the behavior any, the you know being strictly freshwater. I yeah I don't know that'd be a question for him. Because if if he lived down in Florida, he's caught catfish down there for sure, um, which is probably why he catches catfish in Colorado. Because, again, bass and trout, and, you know, bluegill, they just don't put up the same fight. Yeah. Well, and, you, when, you when know, you're used to catching fish in Florida, you go <laughs> to Colorado, and you're like, oh, I got a fish. That was nothing. And it's like a 15-inch trout, and you're like, I, I don't even know if I fought it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so he said, <laughs> cats you can get anytime. Night is best, but I've got them in the middle or the day, or in the middle of the day, too, probably is what he means. So, like, there's this guy that I've been following um, the last few weeks. It's a guy that I'm trying to collab with on YouTube. He's actually from Pueblo, too, or at least from close to Pueblo somewhere. Uh, all mouth bassing. I hope he's okay with me shouting him out in this video. But uh, I see a lot of the stuff on Fish Brain and, you know, some of his content in his videos, and it seems like he's kind of all over the board, too. It's sometimes it's still daylight sometimes it's at night seems like he has more luck at night um i know channel it's a little bit easier to get on the channels kind of throughout the day but you gotta you gotta be in in, in a specific area specifically faster moving water you know it's harder to get on those catfish during the day in the lake but you see i don't even know how true that is either because i've seen some people pulling them out of a local lake here that we have here called minaqua during the day too so i don't know it's really hard to and as far as flatheads go, I don't I don't know if we actually have any flatheads outside of the reservoir. I know we have some flatheads in the reservoir, but yeah, they're they're a lot like blue catfish. They're probably all up in Arkansas. Yeah. Conroy's world of fishing says hello everyone. What's up, man? How's it going? How's it What's going? What's going on, Conroy? What is going on? Guys, you guys are always welcome to ask the guest in, too. I didn't even think to mention that this entire live stream so far. But if you guys have a story you guys want to tell or something, we can give you guys a few minutes on cam. Um, we we like to communicate with our community and actually face-to-face -face is usually better for us. You know, we're actually able to talk. So, um, Jaden Carrera says, oh, yeah, I met All Mouth Bassin in real life before he had a YouTube channel really cool chill dude yeah he seems super chill like i've talked to him over instagram and stuff and uh we're I, what i'm what i'm actually kind of hoping for like he's already agreed to do a collaboration with me we're just trying to plan a time uh we're gonna kind of try to combine it with a bushcraft and catch and cook so i kind of want him to come for the fishing portion of that video and then uh that night i plan on actually just staying in a certain area so i gotta find an area that's gonna work out best for that probably out somewhere by like swallows or something is going to be my best bet i'm going to mute my mic for a minute because 
my baby's going crazy in the background. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear that, but I'll unmute as we're going through. Conroy, doing great, man. Doing real great. Steven said Kentucky was a blast for cats in the daytime and state record was pulled during the day out of the lake here in Pueblo. Yeah, I remember that guy that pulled the one, the state record out of there. Uh, let me see if I can find that, actually. That was that was pretty decent sized fish, actually. Uh, we're doing pretty good, man. Uh, just talking about fish and general outdoor stuff. And like you said, if anyone wants to hop in, uh, we can send them the link. Actually, are you able to put it up in the in any in the chat and pin it to the top? Yeah, I should be able to. Give me just one second here. Um, I can't remember what that guy's name was. Randy Stillwater or something like that. Oh. <laughs> Stillwell. Yeah, it's actually not sure. Are you serious? That's okay. Hold on. I'm trying to find an actual image that's big enough to actually blow up here. Okay, so here is the uh All right, I'm trying to keep up with the comments on Facebook side too. 52 pounds is what Steven said. That's a big catfish. Yeah, I mean, dude, this thing's a monster. I, I got it. I got it. I finally got it. And they caught a 52 pound catfish on rod and reel? Uh, yeah, just right off the boat. Like, um, That's impressive. Let's see, it says Randy Stillwell of Pueblo West caught the monster fish on Sunday, saying it was just the right place at the right time. He was originally jigging for some crappy after giving up on walleye when a huge fish hit the 66-year-old's three-quarter ounce slab spoon. Bro, could you imagine trying to hang on to that thing on the slab, dude? Oh, my God. Uh, see, that's how you know that that guy there has, has a lot of experience because it – like that's a big fish for a slab spoon that, dude. that's okay so the last time i went fishing up here on the chickahominy i'd cast out you know 10 15 times let it sit you know 20 minutes each give or take and then i rode in you know checked my bait it was kind of you know mushed and mangled so i took it off put a fresh one on cast it back out and as soon as I went to stand up to go to the truck to get my water, the line was just, <laughs> I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, the pole started going towards water and everything. I had to catch up to it, catch the pole. It was, it was an ordeal. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm such an idiot. So in my original post on Facebook, for some reason, I pasted all of my tags into the the description at the top of the Facebook post. Did you know that say it's, well, hey, it's, it's helping. I mean, anybody that looks it up on Facebook is going to see all those tags. So. Um, you know, I kind of wonder, though, like, so I've had a couple of people tell me that they, they swear up and down that they have been on giant catfish. Uh, one of them is a buddy I used to work with, and he swears up and down that this is it had to have been a state record it was still big and he knows it was a catfish because he's seen it broke him off right there just right there at the shoreline so i'm kind of wondering what the possibility is of us maybe having one of those you know 30 to 35 pound catfish just chilling you know 100 feet deep in the reservoir it, i mean it's pretty possible uh i don't know about flatheads but channel and blue cats get pretty big and like i was telling you the other day they like to sit just outside of fast moving water uh, that's their favorite place because they sit there and wait for food to roll by yeah um well, when, when they're smaller you know they'll swim around a lot more they'll hunt essentially but when they get bigger they kind of are just like hey this is where i'm gonna sit for a while Well, again, that's my experience here from the Chickahominy River and the James River. So I'm assuming it can't be too much difference 
there can't be too much of a difference between places, but who knows. Copy the clipboard. Let me see if I'm able to, I should be able to add a banner, right? I don't think a banner would be clickable. Um, I think you would have to like comment. Oh, I could definitely drop it in the comments, but let's see. There you go, guys. So if you guys want that link in there is to get into the backstage here. So if anybody wants to join in and just introduce themselves, it's, I mean, it's a free way to get recognized, guys. So it's free promotion for you guys. So it's up to you, Conrad. If you're still in here, you're more than welcome. Or Conroy, sorry. You're more than welcome to jump in there. Steven, same with you. Uh, we can use this time to kind of talk back and forth about some of the experiences that we've had over the last couple of years you know i here's the thing dude like in i have already told frodo about this but colorado's department of wildlife has the master angler program where when you catch a fish over a certain length and it's for each species you get the master angler award so my goal for this year is to cool. for, yeah i want to get one for small largemouth and trout for sure um carp that's gonna be a real difficult one because there's areas up north that have like huge amounts of carp that are large very large in size so right um and sorry guys every time i reach up it's because i can't see the facebook comments on my laptop so i have to actually like go onto my phone click the chat in Streamyards. <laughs> and then hit exit at the top of it so i end up covering my camera you should really use your laptop for this part of it you know what i mean just so you're i've still gotta ask my brother if i can download um like firefox or internet explorer um so i don't know we'll, we'll figure it out one of these days I'm actually surprised that he doesn't have one of those browsers installed already, but I guess it's time to start breaking out some tackle. Start talking a little bit about some of the some of the stuff that I've been getting hits on. I wish I had mine in here. I really do. You gotta get it if you want. I can hold them out until then. And then I'd have to walk all the way downstairs. It's too much work. So I don't know how much light there's gonna be, guys, and I apologize for that. You know, very dim lit room. Uh, so obviously, you know, we have talked about Honestly, right. different types of rigs, your Sankos, got your Texas rig, got your wacky rig. Those are the two that I use the most. Um, so you don't have to be set up for it. If you have a flat spot that you can like set your phone up, even if it's vertical, it doesn't have to be horizontal, but if you can set your phone up and just like copy that link and paste it into your browser, you can hop on and again this isn't like professional studio level stuff so if you want to hop on man feel free we, we don't you know we're not worried about like your background or anything like that obviously i mean you can see my dresser my playstation a stocking from christmas i pointed the wrong way you're on pc again bro like i said if you want to hop on it's not a problem so right here we're uh say so yeah that's what i'm using i'm i'm set up on my pc right now six cents these are uh flipping hooks by six cents um these have actually been kind of nice actually they're super good in some of the vegetation found that you know it works really well as uh for a weedless setup even though it's not really designed for that it's designed specifically for flipping but um it does work really well for that and then I got some of these too. I have not got to use these yet. So if you guys have ever used these bullets, tell me how they work. Because I'm uh, curious. These are the uh, the pro bullets. Corner out. Wait, corner take, out. can you take one of them out? I, I want to yeah. see one like up close. Because I, I think that's what I want, dude. Like that's the hooks that I've been looking for. No, no. These are the ones that I got. I got two packs. That They're the ones that are going to be sent to you. But... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, I mean, that's pretty similar. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, they they're heavy though. I mean, they're they they are heavy, so I I think they're gonna work okay. You know, I don't think they're gonna be terrible. So I don't know. We'll we'll see how it goes. You know, I got my whole box of plastics here. Um, this is what I use for you know mainly bass type of stuff. But kind of pull some stuff out, and I'll show you guys some of the stuff that I've had luck throwing this year. And, you guys have any questions on where I got it or anything like that, feel free to ask. Um, oh, these guys, I, gosh, I think I got a video somewhere, but these are the Z-Man top water frogs. I got a great deal on these at Dick's and it's the only reason why I bought them. So <laughs> I've, um, I've still been waiting for that video, dude. Ever since you uploaded the short, I've been waiting for the top water video. I, and I am almost done with it. The only problem is, is like, I don't have enough content to actually get a full length video out. Gotcha. Mainly because I'm fishing during times of day when top water is just not the best time to fish it. I should have gotten a lot of top water stuff while I was out fishing at night because they were jumping all over at the lake that one night when you were in your buddy's live stream, but I didn't even think about throwing top water. So. Uh, but yeah, these Z-Man topwater frogs, uh, I don't know why I put them away. I got a few hits on the white one. I didn't get any hits on the, uh, the spring toad. Uh, but what's kind of nice about, um, going to Dick's Sporting Goods for some of this stuff is they have their clearance racks and I ended up getting, it was buy five, get five free. So I bought five topwater frogs. Or maybe I bought five Guggen's. I don't remember. Anyway, I got five packages of Guggen soft plastics, and then I got five topwater frogs. Only paid like twenty nine dollars for them for all oh, of yeah, it. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, so it was. I mean, it was a killer deal. And I mean, those of you guys that have watched my content, you guys know I'm not crazy about Guggen baits, but um, the fact that I got all five packages for free, I mean, I'm willing to. I'm willing to try it out. I've just never had good luck with Guggen baits. Yeah, so I'm not the craziest about Guggen baits either. But it's it's nothing to do with quality. They do have good quality. They got great colors. You know, their baits last a while. In my personal opinion, they're just too hyped up. I will show you one that like, actually worked for me. Like I have a bunch of zoom baits that are like close to the same quality. Right here. This is the Guggen Mondo Worm. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what the color is. I think it's a midnight something. It's it. I mean, they, they don't even make it anymore. So this is the last one I have, and I'll probably just hang on to it until I feel like the time's right to use it. But it did work. So trim the strings; they're too long. On oh, on the frogs. Yeah, I haven't even got the chance to really throw them a whole lot. I throw them one day. I was actually going to suggest the same thing, um, but again, I'm speaking from personal experience here. I, don't know what elevation and all that does to fish. Well, here's a smaller. I think this is a Clefton. This is a weighted rear end frog. Um, these got some shorter strings on them. This yeah, one, I'd, here... I'd even cut them shorter. I'd yeah. where they'd start to fall is where I'd cut them. Oh, just where where the arch ends on the bottom of the body, probably. Yeah, so, all right. Like, right. So, like, kind of like this bullet. So, it has, like, a little bit of, not like that, but, like, across your screen. Like. Like, pull them out? No, no, like, just move the frog across the screen. All right, you see where they start to move when you're moving it? Yeah. I cut them back to about there. So, it's, like, maybe this long. Like, knuckle length, dude. Yeah, so about what Steven said, two yeah. inches or so. So yeah, one, two inches, one and a half, two inches. Uh, this one here was actually one of the Guggen Cross, and for some reason, oh wow, that fucking, that's actually a really pretty color. That is a very beautiful color, actually. Um, but it smells like black licorice. <laughs> it, <laughs> I don't know why I smelled it, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Welcome to the life of Chris. That's funny. Uh so it's eventful. 
their crawls are probably my least favorite. My favorite thing that uh, Gugan has is the, um, I can't remember what they're called now. I gotta Google it. I gotta Google it. Well, I'll show you guys some of the crankbaits. I'm sorry that my camera's not focusing. I moved those baits too close, and now my camera does not want to focus in on me for some reason. Let me see if I can fix that. No. I think I'm actually just making it worse. Um, so this is one of the Gold Series Rapalas. They actually don't make these jerk baits anymore. Or this this color anymore. Uh, it, was, it was in the Shad family. Um, I think it was like a J10 or a J15, something like that. Um, this one here worked really, really well last year for walleye. This is what me and Nico were using last year. And this is actually a uh, mirror shad. This is also one of the J series jerks. I don't know if they still make that one. This one here, I don't know. I lost one similar to that to a tree. This one here is a rebel actually. Actually, both of these are Rebel. I lied. This is not a Rapala. So these are both Rebel series, actually. This one here is like a gold and golden red. I mean, it's kind of hard to see on. Okay, it almost looks like neochrome. Yeah, it's 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 got nice colors to it. Uh, the only problem that that I've had with uh, with the Rebels is the action's not that great on them. So I found that if you actually put uh, some bigger treble hooks on them they have a little bit more action but the actions actually kind of pour on them compared to like some of the some of the rapalas where they actually kind of hang a little bit lower so this one here i haven't caught anything on but i bought it more as like a just a fun thing to do it's pink and yellow i think it's you know what i think it's my ring light that's causing all these color issues but yeah i'm actually focused back in on me so i'm not gonna get <laughs> yeah, so guys. like I was saying, my favorite Guggen bait um, is the Bandito Bug. I think that's pretty universal. That works pretty much anywhere. Alrighty, so so yeah, some of the stuff that's been working for me. I've had really great luck on on the jerk baits this year. Um, obviously, earthworms all day long. We've actually used them more than I have fucking a long time. Actually, it's it's been a really long time. So I went from being you know, but before I actually got started, like really heavy into fishing, getting more serious with it, I was more of that guy that would just throw power bait and earthworm all day long. And what's funny is like, I didn't have that much luck until I started fishing with, with more artificial stuff. And then out of nowhere, like live baits are doing really well for me. Uh, shad is a really great thing to fish with too, this time of year, if you guys can find them, uh, minnows too. Yeah. Minnows are so hard to find here, dude. Like, well, Pueblo anyway, um, as far as being able to go purchase minnows, they're, they're hard to find. So freedom. I've thought about it. Uh, did, I actually didn't know until recently that you actually have to have a license for that, which is free from the state of Colorado. Uh, it's uh, aquatic live bait something. I, I don't know. Anyway, I haven't applied for it yet. I'm planning on maybe applying for it next year because I don't think I'm going to have enough time to really get all that together. What I'd like to do is be able to sell minnows cheap uh maybe sell some worms cheap kind of just have like a local live bait thing you know out of the garage or something where people can just come pick up a couple yeah. of some minnows or something but and i i know they breed fast but the only thing is is just the having the time to actually care for them right now is just out of the question i think i'm gonna wait until the baby's a little bit older because the more the more things that i that i find that i'm getting into is taking away from my content which is making it that much harder for me to actually get content out so Uh, actually, yeah. Sorry to get off subject. Uh, Conry, if you're still in here, 
please explain to me what Bimart is. What what is? Bimart. Wherever Bimart. he lives. I, I went to check his channel. I, I thought I was subscribed to him and I was just making sure I am, by the way. Um <laughs> But he did a $30 buy mark fishing challenge 10 days ago. And I want to know what buy mark is and where I can find one because I would like to go there because it looks interesting. But, so when I first when I first was looking at it, I thought it was a Kmart sign. I was like 10 days ago. And then I actually read it and I was like, buy mark. What is buy mark? So yeah, if you're still in here, please, please elaborate on where you are and what that is because I would like to check it out. You know what I kind of want to do one day because I think it'd be super cool is to do editing on one of my videos behind the scenes. Like people can actually see how I'm editing my videos. I think it'd benefit some people that I see that, that make content, you know, because they really struggle with editing. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some people. Actually, I think about there's about four people i could think of actually off the top of my honestly head. i dude i'm half tempted to start sending you my content and have you edit it for me dude i'm telling you log, dude just download wondershare log into my account it's it's an awesome awesome platform to use for editing it's a lot easier than like the adobe stuff because you start getting into adobe after effects and stuff like that and then you're you're paying hundreds of dollars for all these plugins and effects and it, unless you know how to make them which that takes a lot of time you know to make like a three or four second effect could take you right three days to make you know so but yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't know man like i said i just i would like to i, I don't know i just when i start editing I feel like I do really good with like the first two or three minutes and then I'm like, I, I don't know. I just lose interest in it. Yeah. And I, you know, that's, that's kind of like just a hard thing in general, I think is staying motivated with your editing, which is why I don't do too many of the, uh, the top fives anymore like and i know i only did i only actually put out one but i started about three or four of them and i just i can't find enough content you know and i i know that a lot of people are getting it from reddit and stuff like that but when it comes to crediting people that are sharing other people's content you don't even know where to start in order to to give right credit. Right. you know what i mean so because i've thought about like doing like one that i'm working on right now that i started last night was top five largest catfish caught in the united states just just to get another top five video out and it'd be fishing related so i have more content coming out but the problem i'm finding is they will like everywhere shows you the biggest fish but they don't tell you who caught it where they caught it what they used you know which is i kind of understandable but at the same point like i need that in order to build enough content for the video you know what i mean right um i could probably help you track down some sources to be quite honest see uh, what we do is we build the top 10 list you take five i take five and then we both make a video I'll help with the editing if you get all the content or like the pictures and the info or something like that. You know what I mean? Because it gathering the, the information usually isn't too hard. It's the editing that is a pain in the ass because then someone's got to do voiceover or you know something along those lines. And look, fish brain going off right now. Someone's catching a fish, and I'm sitting here talking about it. <laughs> Let's see what they're catching. Let's see. What they're catching. I, I dude, I got fish brain needed on mine because every time there's a catch around here i don't know how these people are getting to the bodies of water they're going to because they're all private <laughs> this is funny it's a brook trout but i i just i have to share this with you guys that's so awesome it is so tiny i actually plan on doing one of the 20 dollars mystery boxes from walmart uh for salt water I actually, I've, I've bought a few of them. Um, no, you know what we should do? You know what we should do for our first like one v one challenge? 
I should get one of the saltwater ones and send it to you. And you should get one of the ones that's based around Colorado and send it to me. And then we switch off. Like you use the saltwater ones for freshwater and I'll use one of the uh, freshwater ones for saltwater. Okay, I'm down. I'm down for that. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm still down for the whole like $5 challenge that we talked yeah. about a long time ago where you have five bucks, you get in there and you get to buy like three items. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think now it would have to be $10 just because <laughs> yeah. prices of everything yeah, has gone up. But just so that you can get, you know, if, because if you're planning on bottom fishing, I mean, that's where it's going to get a little tricky because you, you got to be able to buy your weights, your swivels, you know, however you want to do it, which I mean, you don't have to. So I think, I think what we should do with that, instead of doing like weights and stuff, you get to use all the tackle you already have, but you have to buy like new soft plastics or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I really want to do the mystery tackle box one. I think that'd be fun. Oh, I think it'd be a blast, dude. You're really going to get like a 10 inch log bait that you got to try to catch a fish on in Colorado. <laughs> it's going to be like this long and be like, what the hell, man? <laughs> I'm going to be catching ducks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd go run you, bro. That beaver will take it. I promise you that. <laughs> That giant beaver that walked by me that I swear to God weighed half my weight at least. I did this thing might have weighed closer to like 70 pounds, dude. This thing was huge. It was That's, big. We have beaver here. I've just never seen them. We have muskrats. I've seen plenty of muskrats. Um we also have river otters. I would love to go somewhere and find some river otters. Stephen Dunphy said, I did it. It was a blast. I'm assuming he was talking about that $20 challenge, fish challenge. You know what, Steven? You know what you should do is you should do one of the survival challenge videos with me. It could be my first bushcraft slash survival challenge video as, as a duel because I want to go out there with somebody first by myself. Here's the reason why, guys, because I don't know if anybody on my channel. Actually, I don't think anybody knows this besides you and probably nico um other than my family and friends on facebook that might be watching right now but um with me being diabetic i gotta be really careful where i go and what i do so anytime that that i plan something like that i i always like to take someone out there with me especially the first time if i go to an area that i'm unsure of i like going with somebody just because if something happens you know it it can be a bad deal for me so especially if yeah. i don't very well and honestly, it's it's not even like name a time and date. Stephen says, "Well, let's start, dude, just hit me up tomorrow. We'll plan it tomorrow. Like, it probably won't be tomorrow night, but kids are out of school for the summer, and I'm not doing anything this next week. So maybe we could even just do it, maybe Wednesday. Because I, I have I have family that's diabetic too, and it's not even necessarily you know you getting injured and needing help with that. It's if your blood sugar like crashes or spikes or something and, and you become incoherent, like you don't <laughs> even realize it's happening to where you can like, you know, get help. You need someone there to, you know, be able to dial 911 essentially. Yeah, basically. And that's the thing, you know, when, when you're going to these areas, usually there, there's some sort of a hike involved or a walk, whether it's a hundred yards or, a mile it doesn't matter you know it's when it happens like it happened to me the other day actually when i went to the river and it happened so fast i was on my way back and my blood sugars just tanked like i was walking up this hill i was like Shh, i could feel it so usually what happens is i start getting like like a rapid heartbeat like i could, it feels like uh like an adrenaline rush sort of like the beginning of an adrenaline rush that's what it feels like to me so but yeah, it happened while I was out fishing and it was just a terrible experience because even even though I had sugar on me, it takes a while for me to start feeling normal again, even after like drinking a soda. Like it could take two minutes, it could take 20 minutes. And, you know, going back from low to high again, that's a whole new feeling because then I go from feeling yeah. like crap on that end to feeling like crap on a totally different end, so. Yeah, so, um. The guy I know carries like peppermints with him. 
So if he feels it like starting to tank, he'll just pop a peppermint in his mouth. And because, you know, you don't like chew and swallow peppermints real fast, it kind of helps bring it back up slowly. Yeah. Well, like I, uh, they make uh, glucose tablets and yeah. I tried those. But the only problem is, is if I, if they drop low enough to where they normally are, I usually have to eat like five or six of them in order for it to even get back. Oh, uh, yeah. And then probably within an hour, they're like sky high. No, not really. They'll, they'll actually oh. kind of moderate out. But the only problem is there's only like eight to a container and they're like $4. So it's actually cheaper for me just to go buy a couple of freaking little dollar candy bars and just actually enjoy what I'm eating instead of chalk. <laughs> yeah. Because that's that. what they are. They're, they're, they're like a Tums basically with sugar. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like. But yeah, I guess um, I don't really got anything else to talk about. I mean, we can still talk about whatever, but See, I, I, I want to do like a survival challenge like that too. But I also need someone to go with me, and not because I'm di I'm not diabetic, but I take a blood thinner, dude. So if something happens and I get like a bad cut, I need someone to be like, hey, you know, I'll help. I can either help you stop the bleeding, or I can go and like help you get out of here you yeah. know it's it's a struggle having medical issues regardless of what they are yeah and it, it really does it limits you and, and for those of you guys that, that you know have even minor issues with your health like high blood pressure anything like that always think about that stuff when you guys are out there you think about your safety and your health first um there's there's been a few times like i said i've gotten stuck places without sugar and that's it's scary like it's super but scary. But I, I will say, even though it is, you know, semi limiting, don't allow it to limit you. Yeah. Like still do what you want. Just be a little extra careful, you know. Like I take a blood thinner, I still ride two wheels. I you know, I'm gonna have fun with it. I think I might know where that method feeder thing is possibly. I think it might be in that box that you sent to me. All right. I don't know. Hold on a second. All right. Uh, Steven, if you're still in here, do you have a YouTube man? Also, anyone on the Facebook side, um, if you were able to, if you hop on one of the YouTube sides, I can see your comments a little bit better, but I mean, it's up to you. It really is. Need to start one. Yeah. I say, honestly, so if you're going to start doing stuff with Chris, it'd be a great time to, well, honestly, I, I would use that time to learn because... I mean, he's still learning. I'm still learning. Uh, YouTube is not one of those things that you just, you know, know how to do. You know what I mean? But I, I would take, like, you know, the experience you have with him and creating videos and then start your YouTube. And being so close to each other, you all can help each other out. It, it, it is a big help having someone else with you that also has a YouTube. Um... Like for me, I don't have anyone else around me that has YouTube right now. So I kind of do all this by myself and it it's difficult. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much the only one that I know that has one too, like locally. Well, Steven said he's thinking about starting one or he needs to start one. I was telling him, you know, if he's going to go out with you occasionally, you know, it could be a learning experience for him on, you know, what to do to like get the, you know, footage needed and whatnot. And then after y'all have done a few things together, he can start his own YouTube and it really helps to have someone else that has a YouTube. He said, he said if he started one, he'd be outdoors, like hunting and waterfowl. <laughs> and see, that's what's great too. Because I have a playlist that has nothing in it yet that's for hunting. And I've never done waterfowl, so that would be an awesome experience. That'd be a great collaboration, you know, being able to work with you've someone. Never, you've never duck hunted? 
Mm-mm. It'll be my first year. Have you ever dove hunted? Kind of. <laughs> Shooting pigeons with a BB gun's not dove hunting. That's <laughs> <laughs> been a lot more BB guns, but <laughs> I mean. I don't know. There's just too much legality there. We're not getting into that. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, dude, yeah. Duck hunting is fun. Hunting is <laughs> Cocaine is fun. cheaper, he says. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. I don't know. Bird shot's probably one of the cheaper, cheaper rounds you can get for a shotgun, so... <laughs> So I have, actually, you know what? I don't think I have any dove loads le- left. I think I blew through that box last week when me and Nico went up and shot. Well, bro, that that little uh, that little twenty two that I got, oh man, dude, that thing is so much fun. It kicks ass, dude. I love it, and it's so cheap to shoot. So what was great is when we came back. Oh yeah, dude, a box of one hundred twenty two LR is like eighteen bucks. Yeah. Well, you see, what was really nice, dude, is like the last time we went up and shot up at Carrie's sister's, we were coming back, and I mean, we were so sore, dude. Like just everything we shot, dude. It, we, our arms were done, dude. We were hurt. We even started shooting left-handed at the end because our right, right shoulders hurt so bad. But uh, having that twenty-two there was nice because we just had something to break away from to save ammun- ammunition for one, and for two, we didn't hurt nearly as bad at the end. Of yeah. Season. I um, I want to get a twenty-two. My buddy has one. Five grand in decoys, and I got you on birdshot. Holy crap, dude! I should have called you when I went to this yard sale the other day. This guy had twenty decoys. They were cheaper decoys, but they weren't like super cheap. He said they were like moderate decoys, and he was selling them all for a hundred bucks in this big bag. And he was selling them with a sled and a couple of other things. And I was gonna buy them. I just didn't have the money at the time, so I was like, yeah, screw it. But five grand in decoys, dude. Oh my god. That is insane. So geese decoys are really expensive here. So like turkey and geese decoys. Turkey um, are expensive too. <clears throat> but they're so realistic, man. It's ridiculous. Like I've I've gone by people's houses that buy decoys as like decoration for their yard. I'm like, yeah, look at that geese. Look at that goose. And then I sit there for like three minutes and it doesn't move. I'm like, wow, that's really just a good trick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> got duped by a decoy. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> well, yeah, guys, it's already after 11 o'clock. It looks like everyone's starting to taper out. We've been live for about an hour and a half. I'd like to do this a few times a week. I actually have a little bit more time to do that now, so. Yeah. You know, anytime you come across that stuff, each are about two fifty for six of them. See, now that doesn't sound bad, but I mean, like, could you get away with having between six and twelve decoys and still be okay for hunting waterfowl, or do you need like twenty four decoys? It depends on your area. Like, if you're if you're hunting a smaller area, obviously you don't want like that to be overcrowded. If you're hunting a bigger area. You want to like set up on this side and then some over here on this side as well. That way you have like this cross section where they kind of like try and congregate. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, uh, it's been awesome. It's been a great night. I've had fun. We actually got some views. So obviously these tags worked, which I am grateful for. Because uh, a lot of our other live streams, you know, we were sitting anywhere between zero and two. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But yeah, guys, we had a blast. Like I said, if you guys ever want to get in on one of these live streams, if you guys want to come in and just hang out, um, you guys can always ask. Uh, We're going to start throwing the link up. I don't know if I'll have the link up all the time. It'll just be kind of when we're allowing people to come in and and hang out, uh, talk about basically anything outdoors fishing related whatever you guys want um i don't know what what do you think we should what do you think we should go for next week we'll let everybody know what what we're going to talk about next week we, we got to find something specific or do you want it to be based on 
I huh. think what we need to do is we both need to get like a video out and then do a live. Junior, yeah. what's going on? Sorry, I missed it. Ah, we're not done yet. We're just kind of starting to wrap up. We talked about a lot today. Actually, you missed out on all the all the fun shooting talk. Actually, that was the part you missed out on. So yeah, guys. Uh, Kelly down below in the comments. He's watching on Facebook right now. Um, that's my wife's nephew. Uh, he likes to fish. He likes to hunt. He likes doing all the stuff that I like doing. So hopefully. Maybe I can get him in a couple of videos too. I know that me and him have talked about going fishing together a few times, but he lives kind of far away, comes down on the weekends and stuff. So, really, but. What you need in your videos, uh, not necessarily need, but what I would personally like to see, what I'm sure other people would like to see, is you need a cameraman where like you can actually be in the video, like it, you can see you fishing. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, dude, it'd be, and that, that's honestly why I, like when we first started this me and bruce first started it my plan was that we would both have gopros and we would be able to use cross footage to get each other talking and stuff like that you know right. and now like i'm thinking is it worth it is it beneficial for me to buy another gopro or is it better for me to actually buy a legit camera something that has all of the accessories to use to hold it plus the the tripods and stuff but the biggest problem is, is a lot of the content that i want is going to require me to hike into places or to go fish places that are hard to get to with a tackle box or with my tackle bag and my poles let alone all my camera gear so yeah it would be nice having somebody that can even maybe just come you know just film for like one video a month or something like that just yeah, yeah. You know. but that, that's another reason honestly, why I'm gonna honestly do so a lot of the hiking stuff, you don't need to take all the camera gear, especially if you have someone with you. You know, you can have them go up ahead and set up and have you like coming up the hill. Yeah. Like, and I mean, I can, always, it's, I can always go set up, walk back, walk forward like everybody else does. And I've thought about that. And that's why I've, I've wanted to move into this bushcraft stuff so hard is because I'll actually be able to get my face on camera more because I'll be more stationary most of the time. I won't be, you know, so much just constantly moving around. So, yeah. And they make this GoPro accessory that clips to your GoPro chest harness. I don't have it, but it's like an extension arm. So you could have two GoPros. Uh, like a selfie stick. Faces out. Yeah, you have one that faces out and then like one that faces in. But I feel like that's more of like for somebody that's like doing snowboarding or an action sport kind of thing. Like the reason why I don't use the head mount is for that same reason. Like I think there would be just too much movement there. And yeah. Well, Chris served the bush. I can't I can't see the Facebook comments. This is a thing. We'll throw it up there. Throw it up on the bush. <laughs> the bush. And it's like I, I want to make those videos because just self-reliance, you know, teaching people how to survive, even if it's just for 24 hours, you know, long enough, you know, if they were stuck on the side of the road and mountain, it's a road that, you know, cars don't come up that often, you know. Just being able to stay warm, you know, things like that, different methods, starting fires, stuff like that. That's really what I want to get into. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for that all mouth the bass and collab then it sounds like it's going to be good dude it's going to be a blast um uh he said that he was out of town i don't know where he was fishing this last week but this last weekend he went out of town so otherwise we probably would have done something this last weekend so I need to take my boat out took it out already and caught three in two hours hell yeah dude dude what you should do is you should bring your boat down here for like a weekend dude and we'll just make a whole video on us out on the boat all, all weekend. Believe me. Bring your boat to Virginia. <laughs> Dude, that'd be such an awesome road trip though. <laughs> I'm still wait until I can get down there. Hopefully I'm kinda hoping like maybe at the end of summer, dude, if I could save enough money and get enough time to actually get down there, that'd be awesome. Even like fall. Even in the fall would be awesome. Because you guys stay warmer there. You know, I don't have to worry about freezing like which I'm gonna call it soft. Yeah. yeah. Um we start to cool down around like late October. You guys don't cool down. Don't even say cool down. I don't want to hear that. I just went from ninety to ten. Okay. <laughs> no, 
I don't want to hear about your cold weather. No, you guys actually do get some pretty cold weather, though. I yeah, well, like surprised. I said, it, our fall starts around late or late October, mid November, and then you know winters December, January, <laughs> and February, and then March, April, May, June, July. They're all hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, it's pretty much how it goes. But all right, you guys. Well, I think I'm going to wrap this up for tonight. Um, I'm going to try to get yep. some sleep. I got a doctor's appointment in the morning, and then I'm going to try to get get out and do some fishing or something tomorrow. And this camera not focusing is really making me mad. Pay all this money for, for good camera gear for it to not focus. It's, it's just insane. Yeah. But anyway. Gas prices, though. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, gas would be that. I mean, you'd need two grand alone just in gas to get back and forth. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Since you're coming to Virginia, I'll pay for gas for the boat. <laughs> Until we get stuck out in the middle of the ocean. Where's the gas? I put gas in. We're <laughs> out of gas, though. Well, <laughs> nah, I want to go out into the ocean. Uh, depending on the type of the boat, I, we might go out to like the bay or something, but I want to go out to the ocean. I would. Dude, if I'm going to Virginia, I'm going out on the ocean, dude. I, I don't care if it's on a kayak. I'm going out there, bro. I will take you out on a kayak. Kayaking in the ocean's fun. Yeah, dude, I think it'd be a blast. But, like, bass boats would not do good in the ocean. What in the hell is going on? Focus, focus, focus. I don't know why my camera is not wanting to focus, dude. Like, no, it's so super irritating. Super irritating. But yeah, um, Jaden, yeah, you take care too, man. Um, so we're gonna yeah, let's establish this now before everybody leaves. We're gonna do this every Sunday and every Wednesday. That sound all right? Sunday night and Wednesday night, because that's I think those are you know Wednesday night something for people to come home to and watch unwind to. Sunday nights, yeah. unless obviously unless we're out fishing or getting content or something on a sunday night then we'll do sunday nights just because that's the end of the week As a 19 foot tracker w but what's wt stand for dude trackers are so nice that's what i want dude i want a tracker so bad dude i'm, a, I'm just gonna google it 19 tracker's my foot tracker w yeah that wouldn't make it on the ocean <laughs> but a kayak will yes i don't understand that all right so, so kayak, let's pull this up kayaks here. can flip over but it's easier to roll a kayak back over than a boat oh man um, that's a sexy boat though oh it, man if you take that on, out on the ocean and you hit like a four or five foot swell, it's probably just going to tip it over. Bro, there's a video. They're on the ocean. I, come on, come on. Yeah, if y'all come out here with the boat, I am, I'm going to be wearing a life jacket the whole time, but we can try <laughs> 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 uh, he brings up the life jacket instantly. Yeah, if, if you want me involved, bro, we got, I got it. <laughs> I also, I also, oh, be, I'm be bringing my kayak on board. <laughs> so when the boat goes under, I, mean, I can paddle back to shore. I'll set I mean, up for y'all. I typically wear a life jacket anyway. I mean, like I said, yeah, I'm about being safe. Um, <laughs> I, I tend to, you know, like I'll pull my life jacket off. Um, as long as it's next to me, like if I'm out somewhere where it's calm, you know, and I'm just sitting there fishing, I'm on my little yeah, boat. Yeah, so. But for the most part, I have my life jacket on. Like lakes and stuff, I, I, I don't wear my life jacket. I'm not a great swimmer, I, I can admit that. But on a lake, I know I can make it back to shore. I wear my life jacket when there's like either a swell or fast moving water. Because again, I am not a strong swimmer, so if I get you know, tipped over in fast moving water, I'm just gonna go under. There's no saving me from there. Is that why you don't is that why you don't surf? Pretty much. 
Dude, that's one thing I wanted to try so bad is surfing, dude. I, I will buy you a surf. Actually, no, I won't. They're expensive. I will find you a surfboard when you come to the East Coast. Dude, we'll I'll just, record you trying to surf. But dude, we'll just we'll just find some like some little twelve year old kid. We'll throw him twenty bucks and be like, hey, just let me borrow this for a little while. <laughs> dude, we'll just cut. I use them tree. mostly okay. for moving across the lake. Yeah, same, same, Junior. Like, like. If I get to somewhere where I'm anchoring or I know I'm just going to be sitting there for a while, I'll take my jacket off mainly because it gets hot, dude. Like, I mean, stupid yeah. hot. Yeah. I'll end up being all wet and stuff throughout the whole thing. So that sucks. But Speaking of, I need to make a dry bag for my kayak. I need to start working on that. Yeah. You know what? What I thought would be really cool to invent, which it kind of already has been invented, but something that would just be a little bit better for fishermen is the fisherman life jackets but the ones that have the the foam slabs that are real small real lightweight something that's not super heavy something that you can almost you know like walk out into the river and feel comfortable standing in like some of the faster currents you know because you have a jacket on a life so, jacket <laughs> what i think would be cool and they, they already make them as the ones like like a raft essentially where you pull it and it goes up. Those, you know, don't get too hot while you're wearing them like the foam ones do because foam is insulation. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, so those don't get too hot. The problem is after a certain amount of time, they're not rated for water anymore because the uh, plastic or whatever rubber it is breaks down. Yeah. Well, a lot of them have tags on them too, and I'm what I'd like. It's kind of surprising that the states don't push super hard on checking dates on life jackets. Like, I don't even think that people know if there's actually a date on your life jacket. That so, says, you know, here they don't actually, you don't even legally have to wear it here, but <laughs> for any vessel you're on that has an engine over five horsepower, actually, it's probably any vessel you're on. But I know specifically for any vessel you're on that has an engine over five horsepower, if there has to be a life jacket for every person. On That's board. how it is here. And it's, I mean, it's, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know how the rule is, but the way I've always known it is you always have to have one life jacket per every person that's on the boat. They don't have to wear it unless they're under 15 years of age here. So if you're over the age I of 15, it's 13 here. Yeah, see, if you're over the age of 15, you kind of have that that choice. I mean, personally. <laughs> I say I think it's 13 here. Dude, I just took my boat in course, and I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, you are, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Look, 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 look. Yeah, I... When I am driving the boat, everyone will have one available to them if they want to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> You can't force people, man. I mean, it's the way I see it is it's it's their ticket. You know what I mean? If if they want if they don't want to follow the rules, and then they, yeah. But what what ends up happening is it falls back on the person that's operating. The, right, the, right. Unfortunately, it falls on the captain where it should fall on. You know, say for instance, I had a boat and I took you and you know the girls out, and they didn't want to wear it. It should be your ticket, not mine. But because I'm the captain of the boat, it is my ticket because yeah. I'm responsible for all parties. Yep. Oh, well, all right, you guys. Well, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Frodo, are you going to stay live for a little bit? Or? No, I'm, I'm jumping off team. Yeah, we've been at it for about two hours, guys. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Please like, please subscribe, guys. Hitting that subscribe button is really going to help us. And if you hit that notification bell, too, um it's gonna let you guys get notified anytime yeah. we post content so and if everyone can hop over to my youtube and subscribe to me that'd be great i'm still trying to get to 100 so i can make a custom euro i'm tired of sharing my channel out and it's like youtube.com slash jyx95 whatever i want to say youtube.com slash hook fishing yeah that's <laughs> right. so i want to get to 100 subscribers anyone that can help me out i will subscribe back even if you don't have content, I don't care. I'm just trying to get to 100. Yeah, I guess. Make sure you guys help him out. Um, and uh, make sure you guys are following our social media accounts, especially Instagram. We kind of give sneak peeks and stuff, what's coming up in future videos and stuff. And I know I'm going to be 
doing a 24 hour sneak peek before every video that comes out if i have the chance so uh junior said he's gonna sub to you junior thank you i appreciate it i know for much appreciated it. yes he's getting super close so it's, it's and just crazy. once you do it just comment on one of my videos and say hey i'm you know came from the facebook or whatever and uh, i'll make sure i sub back to you Jaden Carrera says he got you too, guys. Thank you, guys. He really needs the help. He's super close to 100. And I'm telling yeah, you. I, I keep dropping. I keep dropping like two. I get up to like 92, and then I'll drop back down to 89, get up to like 91, drop back down. Once you get to like 120, dude, you'll just start noticing like subscribers flying in as long as you're making content. And then out of nowhere, <laughs> it dies at like 500. Like, <laughs> dies. Yeah. So now I'm struggling between five and 600 now. I just want to get to 1,000 so I can freaking get monetized dude but <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a struggle that's where i'm at right now <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah if you want to get monetized i just want to custom your <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. yeah that's that's how it works usually <laughs> but alrighty, guys well thank you guys for watching once again i'm chris go fishing outdoors bobby with hook fishing you guys have a good night later <laughs>